Okay, the final item of business is our members' business debate on motion 5453 in the name of Claire Adamson on Gas Safety Week 2022, the hidden dangers. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd invite members who wish to participate to press the request to speak button, place an R in the chat function if they're joining us remotely. And I invite Claire Adamson to open the debate for around seven minutes, Ms Adamson. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to highlight Gas Safety Week 2022 which ran from the 12th to the 18th of September and is coordinated by Gas Safe Register. May I thank all colleagues who are speaking this evening and all those who signed the motion to allow the debate to take place this evening. I'd also like to thank organisations in the third sector, such as Age Concern Scotland, ROSPA, and industry organisations such as SGN, who get behind Gas Safety Week to promote safety in all our communities. This would have marked the 12th year of the campaign. The events and activities around the initiative were cancelled in light of the sad death of Queen Elizabeth. But the messaging around Gas Safety Week remains every bit as important. Gas Safety Week emphasises the danger of poorly maintained gas appliances. This can cause gas leaks, fires, explosions and carbon monoxide poisoning. And while I have launched motions of this initiative and we have held events over a number of years, I believe this is the first debate on Gas Safety Week in the Scottish Parliament. So, some fundamentals. Who are Gas Safe Register? Gas Safe Register provide a host of support and resources, including an interactive gas map tool, allowing consumers to find out how many unsafe gas jobs have been carried out and identified in their area. Formerly known as Corgi, it's the official registration body of gas businesses and in engineers in the United Kingdom. Anyone undertaking gas work in a commercial or domestic setting, by law, must be on the Gas Safe Register. A gas engineer can only be aligned to a registered business and be issued with a licence to undertake gas work if they individually hold a valid and current qualification. The register and all the services associated with it are operated on behalf of the relevant health and safety authority for each region, the health and safety executive in the UK. Gas Safe Register also provide a host of free resources and advice to help people stay, stay safe. In the interest of raising awareness, here are 10 simple steps to help keep you safe and warm in your home. So you should only use a gas safe registered engineer to fit and fix services. You can find the register online and you can check the credentials of any gas person, anyone presenting as a gas safe engineer with their organisation. You can check both sides of your engineer's gas safe, re safe register as each of the elements that are qualified are, are listed separately on their credentials and you must make sure that the engineer undertaking work is qualified in the particular area of work that they're undertaking in your home. Gas appliances need to be regularly serviced and checked. If you rent a home, you can ask for a copy of your landlord's current gas safety record. Know the signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. This is so important. CO poisoning can cause headaches, dizziness, breathlessness, nausea, collapse and lack of con consciousness. Unsafe gas appliance can put you at risk of CO poisoning, also your pets at risk of, of CO poisoning, and it can cause leaks, fires and explosions. One of the things about CO poisoning is that you may find that these symptoms alleviate when you leave your home. And indeed, I don't think I'm... Um, saying anything out of turn when I say one of my MP colleagues attended a gas safety event in Westminster and from that event realised that he himself could be suffering and it turned out was suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning and that's why raising awareness is so important. We also need to check gas appliances for warning signs. If there's a yellow flame and not a, a crisp blue, blue one, that could indicate a problem. And also black marks, stains around the appliance and too much condensation in your room can indicate a problem. 
and every home should have an audible carbon monoxide alarm. This alerts you if there is carbon monoxide in your home. But I would go further and follow some of the other safety advice that suggests you should pack a CLO, CO alarm when you're on holiday, as a, these are vital um, and can indicate if there's a problem in a temporary holiday accommodation or a caravan where there may be no working alarm, particularly when travelling abroad. You need to keep vents and chimneys clear, so do not block up vents that have been put in for gas appliances. Use a glass, glass, gas appliances also only for their intended purpose. Don't be tempted to use them for something they weren't meant for, such as heating a room. And the use of camping stoves, stoves and disposable barbecues in the context of carbon monoxide poisoning is very important too. In a domestic setting, if they're used not as intended or used in an enclosed space, can also lead to carbon monoxide poisoning and, sadly, death. Know your emergency procedure. If you smell gas or suspect immediate danger, then familiarise yourself with emergency contacts freely available um, for the relevant gas safety numbers in Scotland. And most importantly, as we're doing today, spread the word. Share vital gas safety information with friends, family and neighbours and make sure your communities stay safe. And that's the purpose of Gas Safety A Week, is raising this awareness. I became an in interested in gas safety awareness because of a matter of social justice. Accidents disproportionately impact people in the most deprived areas. Mm -hmm. So if you're passionate about equality and social justice, you have to be passionate about accident prevention and safety. Our constituents are facing a cost of living crisis and while budgets are stretched to the limit, safety checks and annual services are something which could be overlooked but they simply can't be a discretionary spend. They are vital. So I would ask the Minister this evening, in his discussions with colleagues on the cost of living crisis, could he push, push for providers to offer discounted or free services to those who are at most risk from fuel poverty, in much the same way as fuel cards and payments may be accessed, as this may become a very vital issue. Presiding officer, Running out of time quickly, as always in these um, debates, but I thank all my colleagues this, e this evening and ask them to use their social media, use their presence in their communities to promote gas safety, not just in Gas Safety Week, but throughout the years to keep our communities safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Adamson. And I call uh, Miles Briggs to be followed by Mark Griffin for around four minutes. Th thank you, uh, Deputy President Officer. And can I um, start by thanking Claire Adamson on securing this member's debate this evening and for her campaigning on this issue, which is a very important issue. And I'm pleased this member's debates uh, come to the Chamber. Because um, it is welcome to have further discussion on the issue uh, today, especially at a time when issues around gas are in the news so often. Um, and it is worth reflecting that gas safety has significant significantly improved from where we were 30 years ago. However, too often we do still hear reports around gas explosions in homes and the widespread uh, destruction of property or even fatalities or a carbon monoxide leak that results in people being poisoned. So raising public awareness is absolutely crucial. Um, we already have and welcome the fact that we have Gas Safety Week, yet that only scratches the surface of much uh, more which needs to be done on this area um, to maybe look towards how we can more regularly improve ongoing public information campaigns not just here in Parliament, but by energy companies themselves, focusing on the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, I was trying to remember before this um, debate whether or not my council tax actually included a piece of information on this, because I think it did, but I think I might have been to the piece of paper which came with it. But there's ways we can actually make sure that public information is, is taken forward. Overall, in Scotland and the UK, we have a reasonably good record on safety in our gas network. That being said, there are issues which need highlighted. One area that certainly needs to be addressed is the issue around proper maintenance of gas equipment by registered gas safety engineers. Many people will be unaware of the importance of this and are still um, unable in many cases to afford what will be a higher cost for paying for an annual checkup on um, appliances. Uh, with concerns which um, Claire Adamson's rightly raised with the uh, cost of living crisis and energy bills this winter, 
many people will just not have the income to check their appliances. So organizations and charities are already providing services like that, and I hope we can promote that through our, our networks and genuinely maybe see how that can be widely um, accessed. Equally important is that we support tenants who request a gas safety certif certificate from landlords as well. Now, given that this is a legal obligation, I hope all landlords should be aware of that obligation to, to, to make that available to their tenants. The COVID-19 pandemic has impressed upon all of us the real importance of having reliable and safe gas appliances in properties as people have spent more time in their homes as well. And according to staygassafe.co.uk, um, stay one in five homes in Scotland inspected by gas safety um, engineers had unsafe gas appliances. So it is vital that consumers stay safe by checking their gas appliances every year and by checking that their engineers who are doing this are also gas safe registered. However, it's not just, like I've said, the duty of consumers to do this. I think it's also important that we look towards that corporate social responsibility, which Claire Addison touched upon. Helping to protect customers and save lives is vital, and carbon monoxide poisoning should be a concern of the past, but regrettably is not. And we need to see how... And, and what I was taken with was actually a point around tourism, when people are actually going to caravans or visiting properties um, to take an alarm with them, or actually for these properties to also be fitted with them and people having the confidence of the appliances they will be using while on holiday. So that's, I think, an important issue to come out of this debate as well. Um, According to a report by Corgi Home Plan in 2015, one in 10 Scottish adults had suffered carbon monoxide poisoning in their own home, which is a tr truly staggering statistic, really, and one that reinforces the need to be vigilant about unsafe energy appliances. Awareness around carbon monoxide poisoning is still not where it should be, and I hope this debate helps to demonstrate that. People often are associating it uh, with death, but often, like has been highlighted, it is flu-like symptoms um, which present and can actually, in many cases, help drive um, potential brain damage, strokes, depression, personality changes. So there are other things which I think we need to also highlight changes around. It's also, as been mentioned, odourless, which only adds to its menace. It is therefore crucial that utmost care is taken to ensure that any leaks and faulty appliances are identified and we prevent that. So to conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, um, as we approach Scottish winter months, I'd like to see all organisations involved in gas provision uh, to throw their weight behind this campaign and how we extend it beyond Gas Safety Week. Very much welcome the fact that Claire Adams has brought this debate to Parliament and hope this is a beginning of what can be a substantial piece of work to try to drive all deaths down during this. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Mr Briggs. And I call uh, Mark Griffin, who joins us remotely, and to be followed by Siobhan Brown for around four minutes. Uh, Mr Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. At the outset, I'd just like to draw members' attention to my register of interest, which shows that I am an owner of a rental property in North Lancashire. I'm, I'm grateful to Claire Adamson for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. Um, I think that given the winter that we face with increased cost of heating, housing and food, it's more important than ever that we recognise the risks of unsafe gas appliances. And the annual service is obviously key to making sure that we can go through winter without having to potentially face a cold bath or a shower and that the heating doesn't fail when temperatures get really low. And I suspect, uh, worryingly so, like um, Claire Adamson and Miles Briggs have already touched on, that the costs of servicing those appliances will probably seem like an expense that could be saved by many households who are struggling this year in particular. And having taken a look at the gas map tool that Claire Adamson references in our motion, it's really concerning to see the numbers of unsafe gas appliances in every community across Scotland. I had a look around the areas around my home in Cumberland that shows hundreds of unsafe boilers, unsafe cookers and unsafe fires, really concerning the number of unsafe appliances that are out there. And for tenants in private and social sector housing, these services should be conducted regularly, but we know some landlords do fail to fulfil their legal duties to maintain a property or sometimes can have problems 
in getting access to properties to carry out those annual checks. Plenty of tenants as well are ultimately unaware of their rights to have their appliances serviced and even the very existence of the repairing standard. A report by Rent Better published in May that found um, amongst its sample that private tenants were dissatisfied with repairs and the condition of their homes, that they had low awareness of rights, including the repairing standard, and they had a lack of confidence or a, a fear of exercising their rights due to potential repercussions of rent increases or being evicted just for asking for a safe standard to be maintained. And I absolutely welcome the government's plan for a tenants' rights campaign, but perhaps our awareness campaigns need to be broader or at least um, more integrated when it comes to different uh, strands of tenants' rights. Uh, I also wanted to touch on um, the risks of the dangers of poorly maintained gas appliances that Claire Adamson's motions refer to, which can cause fires and carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, we all know the, the measures that we can take to make our homes um, safer, but they can be costly, sometimes a, a cost particularly that some people can't afford right now. And like I say, people will be reconsidering whether they should service their gas appliance this year. In February, the new smoke and fire alarm standard was introduced, costing an average of £250 per household at a cost that um, households have already borne. The compliant households will now have much better protection, but the cost was far from insubstantial. The cost and benefit are a double-edged sword for low-income homeowners. Now, the £1 million eventually allocated to help low-income households wasn't quite enough. FYs I obtained regarding the first tranche of cash put installations at £325 each. So the, the total that would probably um, deliver about 3,000 installations against an estimated 60,000 plus eligible needing an upgrade. And I wonder what action um, the government have been able to take and hope the government, the, the minister can outline in closing when the next housing quality standards survey will be published detailing the progress to, made to meet that standard. And like Claire Adamson and, and others have uh, mentioned, given the costs of those installations, it would make sense to see what work can be done to limit the or reduce the cost of an annual um, service for those struggling um, most. But, President Officer, I know many people will be avoiding turning on the heating for as long as possible this year. But when we do, having those appliances working in the best order could be a matter of life or death. So it's of utmost importance that those appliances are serviced. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Griffin. Um, good to see your doorbell in uh, fine working order there. Um, I now call uh, Siobhan Brown, who is the last speaker in the opening debate, for about uh, four minutes. Ms. Brown. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking my colleague Claire Edison for bringing this very important debate to the Chamber this evening and also highlighting some really important points in her speech. It is so important that people understand the importance of ga gas safety and the dangers of gas that can cause death and serious injury. Worryingly, figures from research by Gas Safe Register had gas safety at the bottom of their list of priorities for homeowners. Only 12% of home buyers would fit in a new boiler, whereas 27% would prioritise redecorating the, the home first. Deputy Presiding Officer, unfortunately, I have a community within my constituency who has been devastated by a gas explosion and know only too well the devastating consequences. Last year, around 7 p.m. on Monday, the 18th of October, a major gas explosion devastated the Kincaidson community in my air constituency. The explosion was heard miles away in neighbouring towns. I remember vividly my windows rattling and hearing a big bang, which I dismissed as my children were upstairs, maybe just jumping off a bed, to shortly afterwards an image of devastation, panic and chaos appearing on social media. Fire services, police, ambulance were all redeployed at pace 
to assist at the scenes. And sometimes one does not appreciate the emergency services until you see them in action in a national emergency like that night. And I'd like to put my personal thanks and gratitude for all the emergency services who worked relentlessly that night in, and in the days um, after that awful event. In the moments after the blast, there was confusion, panic and fear. Hundreds of people were evacuated, four houses were destroyed, windows were shattered, cars were destroyed, and there was a community in panic. Scenes that would be comparable to a war scene, not a, a quiet neighbourhood uh, Monday night in air. And for many hours, nobody knew what had happened and how many were injured. The local community centre opened its doors and the community of Kincaidson pulled together to try and make some sense of what had just happened and to support each, each other. And due to the devastation, it took days to confirm that thankfully that there had been no deaths, but unfortunately a family of four were hospitalised that evening. What we saw in the following days was not only the community of Kincaidson coming together, but the whole of air pulled together. Individuals donated food, supplies, as well as all the local businesses and making sure those affected had essential supplies and a safe place to sleep while they waited for all clear to return to their homes. And one year on, the people of Kincaidson are still haunted and recovering from that night. As time went on, the community demanded answers. Why did this happen? What could be done to prevent this happening again in the future? A recent HSE report revealed that the explosion was caused by corroded pipes running through the estate, laid down by the predecessor to SGN. Before this report was published, uh, SGN did prioritise replacing the whole gas pipe work in the area from the old lead pipes which were laid in the 1970s to the new safer plastic pipes. I'd like to take this moment to ask that lessons can be learned from this gas explosion in Kincaidson. We need to prioritise replacing of the old lead pipes to the new safer plastic pipes as a matter of urgency throughout our communities. The reason I raise this incident is that it shows that gas is something to be treated with respect and with caution. Fail to do that, then it could result in life-changing consequences. We go on to turn our heating or hot water without thinking about it. The problem is we often don't realise how dangerous gas can be until it's too late. Although the Kincaidson explosion was unrelated to the residents' activities, there are still important lessons that we can take from that night. And let me echo the statements that have already been made. If you smell gas, shut off your gas emergency safe valve, open the doors and windows to let fresh air in, extinguish all naked flames and do not smoke. Don't operate electrical switches, even to turn them off. And then call the gas emergency number, which was 0800111999. Please write that down and save it on your phones and share it with family and friends. This is an emergency number we should all remember. We could also take important and easy steps to prevent gas leaks. Have your gas appliances serviced and safety checked every year using the Gas Safe Registered Engineer. It's a small thing to do, but it will give you peace of mind and can perhaps save your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Brown. I now invite Patrick Harvey to respond to the debate. Minister, for around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I, of course, thank Claire Adamson, uh, as others have done, for bringing the motion for debate and thank uh, the contribution of all members from across the chamber uh, on what is clearly an important but also a, a life-saving matter and whether in relation to uh, a sudden traumatic event such as the, the one that Siobhan uh, Brown uh, just described, thankfully rare uh, but nonetheless uh, traumatic, or indeed the slower and more invisible danger of uh, issues like carbon monoxide poisoning which Claire Adamson and others have, have mentioned, uh, all of this is a rem reminder of how important uh, and how potentially life-saving uh, it is to, to take gas seriously, as, uh, as Siobhan Brown just mentioned. Gas Safety Week is an annual safety week that provides a platform for the industry as well as consumer organisations and individuals uh, across the, the UK in raising awareness uh, with the whole public of the issues of gas safety and the importance of taking care of gas appliances. Uh, it's coordinated by the Gas Safe Register, the official list of gas engineers who are legally allowed to work on gas appliances. Uh, now, as uh, Claire Anderson mentioned, and, and as all members will appreciate, the death of the Queen meant that much of the Gas Safety Week activity was not taken forward 
by Gas Safe Register as planned. However, despite some scaling back of the planned activity, Gas Safety Week has been uh, active since 2011. It's gone from strength to strength in engaging the wider public uh, in innovative ways, uh, as the motion rightly sets out. And I would uh, commend all of this work and all of those uh, who have been involved in it. They have our thanks for keeping people safe. Uh, and I, I think Claire Adamson is right as well uh, to ask the government to consider uh, what more we can do to make sure that uh, support and prevention work is targeted uh, to those who need it most, including those households facing the most severe cost of living impacts. Uh, and I'll certainly take that up and have a discussion with, uh, with colleagues. It may be that there's a role not only for government, but also for industry and the third sector in helping to make that happen. Now, as, uh, in, in my role as uh, Minister for Heat and Buildings and Zero Carbon Buildings, uh, members uh, will be aware that this makes me uh, Minister for a post-gas future. Uh, my job and the Scottish Government's priority, and indeed a shared priority for all of us who supported Scotland's ambitious uh, and essential climate targets, is to support households and businesses uh, to move not only toward more energy efficient uh, buildings, but also away from gas and towards zero carbon sources. But as things stand right now, gas, of course, plays a very significant part in how we heat our homes and buildings and how we cook. So it is important that even as we accelerate that transition to our decarbonised homes, gas safety remains on our agenda uh, all year round, not only during Gas Safety Week. Uh, it's uh, not always, though, uh, a, a priority which is uh, at the front of our minds as individuals, as householders, uh, and so the importance of having gas, appliance, uh, gas appliances safely checked by gas safe engineers at least once a year really can't be underestimated. If left unchecked, poorly serviced gas appliances can cause gas leaks, fires, explosions and carbon monoxide poisoning. This year, Gas Safety Week focused uh, on the steps that consumers can take to ensure that they stay safe themselves. That includes uh, some things that we shouldn't do. Not attempting DIY work on gas appliances, for example. Being aware of the warning signs as well of uh, unsafe appliances like dark or sooty staining. Uh, and it's worth reiterating the important actions that people uh, can take positively uh, to ensure that they remain safe. A faulty gas appliance can cause injury or death, and it's important to, to ensure uh, that all these appliances and the associated equipment are safe to use. Uh, they should be regularly serviced by qualified, competent gas engineers who are gas safe registered. Only engineers who are gas safe registered can service gas appliances uh, and equipment, including boilers, portable heating or lighting, gas fires and cooking appliances. Uh, and, of course, no one must ever use gas appliances that they think might be faulty uh, and ensure that vents, grills and flues are kept free from obstruction. Uh, faulty uh, appliances and restricted ventilation can also, uh, as we've heard, lead to a dangerous build-up uh, of carbon monoxide in the home. So fitting, as Claire Adamson said, fitting and maintaining a carbon monoxide detector can give people a warning of a faulty appliance. Uh, that's why the Scottish Government made it a legal requirement to include a carbon monoxide detector in any room uh, with a carbon fueled appliance. And I would strongly encourage everyone uh, to look into fitting one of these detectors as soon as possible if they've not yet done so. As members will be aware, gas safety legislation uh, is reserved to the UK Government and applies across the UK, covering a wide range of gas safety issues. Regulation 36 of the Gas Safety Installation and Use Regulations 1998 sets out the statutory duty on annual gas safety inspections. And as is the case in each UK administration, uh, our building regulations also set out requirements relevant to the initial installation of gas appliances. The person responsible for the building is required to ensure that a new combustion appliance is installed to operate safety, uh, safely. Uh, and for gas-fired appliances, our supporting guidance uh, cites the UK legislation that's applicable to both installations and to the competence of the installers. As, uh, as I think Mark Griffin mentioned, for those who live in rented accommodation, both social and private, landlords are responsible uh, for ensuring that ne necessary safety checks are carried out. Our New Deal for Tenants proposals show our determination to continue to strengthen the position for tenants in Scotland. 
The Scottish Government's prescribed information legislation for private landlords began on the 16th of September 2019, and this means that when a landlord is either applying online for registration for the first time or renewing their registration online, they will be required to complete questions on gas safety certification. And landlords have three main responsibilities to carry out those gas safety checks every year, to provide the tenant with a copy of the annual gas safety certificate, and to ensure the continued safety of pipework, appliances and flues by carrying out maintenance work. And as a landlord, uh, it is a legal requirement to provide a gas safety certificate uh, for their property for the current year uh, and to check and retain that certificate for the previous two years. That certificate confirms that the gas installation is safe uh, and all gas appliances are safe and free from danger. Uh, in winding up, De uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, we've heard uh, about the various regulations in place uh, to protect consumers. They play a vital role, but it is also important to recognise the, the role of, cons uh, of supporting consumers to protect themselves. Householders must remember they should only use engineers who are on the gas safe register. The register is easily accessible online and can either be used to find a local registered business or to check whether a particular business is on the register. So initiatives like uh, Gas Safety Week have a vital role to play in supporting consumers in making wise choices uh, when they have uh, work done on gas appliances. Presiding officer, in closing, I would just want to put on record once more the government's sincere thanks to all those who supported Gas Safety Week, and I hope people will make use of the available material and ensure that their gas appliances are checked over by gas safe engineers so that they and their family members are safe. Thank you very much indeed, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.